YouTube. I asked, you guys answered, and you guys want another mixing tutorial. So, in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to mix your beats like Pyrex and Southside. But I mean, realistically, it's just gonna be an overall mixing and mastering guide. All right, so I'm gonna break this video down into three steps. The first one is gonna be your sound selection, which is just gonna be the type of drums you pick and then just how they sit well together. The second part of this is gonna be your mixing. So this is gonna be just basic leveling of your drums and stuff like that. I'm gonna talk about gain staging. And then the final step, number three, is gonna be mastering, which is gonna be the final part of your mix and how you upload it to YouTube or send it off to someone. And basically what you're gonna be doing in the mastering stage is just getting the beat to sound right, stereo, like in the stereo field, and then you're also gonna be using some EQ, maybe a little bit of compression if you really need it, and you're just really trying to get that beat as loud as possible. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do for this video is to try and make it quicker. I'm just gonna go through and find a sample real quick. All right, so here's the sample I picked out. This is uh, in Nick Mira's new kit uh, called the Big Bad Bundle, Mira Touch. He released it for free, so um, it's 157 BPM. I'll let you guys listen to it real quick. All right, so step one, so sound selection. So I'm gonna be using all the drums for my new kit, only that. So if you guys have been having issues with your sound selection, I'd go searching for some kits, but you don't really gotta go that far because I got my kit right here. Link in the description if you wanna cop that fire drums, but let's get into it. So first thing I usually do when I'm making a beat is pick out, I'd go for like the clap, the hi-hat, perks, snare, and like open hat. That'd be the first five or six things that I'd get done. So I'm gonna go through and do that real quick. The basic idea here is you wanna listen to the sample you're using and just try and find drums that you think would work good. So play it well, like play the sample and while you're trying to find the drums, just click through and click sounds that you think might fit well. Okay, so this is what I got so far. I got the clap, I had, I got a two, sna uh, three sna uh, two snares, an open hat, and then another open hat that I just edited a little bit. So, so far everything is dry, not even routed to a mixer track. All I did is level it a tiny bit with the, uh, the preamp pre -amp knobs right here, which I mean for this part, there's really no trick to it. You literally just do it by ear. So if you can't figure out how to get these to sound right, go through on Spotify, listen to your favorite songs and just base it off that. How loud the clap should be, how loud the hi-hat should be. And based on this beat that I'm making with the sample, this is what I got. All right, so next thing I would do is go through and do the 808. All right, so for the 808, I'm gonna be using this one in my kit. It's, I don't even know how to say it, but it was made by one of my buddies I know called, uh, his name's Scorpio, so shout out to him. So this isn't really part of mixing, but to get the right key of your 808, the only thing I do, so for example, I don't know the key of this song, because Nick Mira made it. So what I would do is make sure my 808 is on cut itself. Always make sure it's tuned to C. You do that by right clicking, edit in audio editor, click this button right here, detect pitch regions, C. So it's at C, so you're good. Then you go to your piano roll and just bring it up about two octaves and just listen for whatever sounds right. You'll know when it's the right one because it'll literally just fit right with the sample. So it looks like this is an A and I don't like how the 808's hitting. It's just like a little too low in octave. So what I'm gonna do is boost this sample by 200 cents. That way I could bring the 808 up 200 cents as well. And 100 cents is just the, the next note. So it would be, if I go up 100 cents, it'd be A sharp. Then 200 cents would be B. So now we got this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and click in a nice 808 pattern. All right, so this is the 808 pattern that I clicked in. I'll let you guys listen to that. So before I do anything else, uh, one thing I always do is go to the envelope settings on my 808, turn the attack down, hold all the way up, uh, decay, sustain, and release all the way down as well. And this will make it just so the 808 will only play for as long as the note is spread out. So for example, if I bring it right here, the 808, as soon as it hits right, as soon as the play, as soon as it plays past here, it'll stop immediately, which is what you want. Just so like when it, uh, when you cut the 808 out, it doesn't roll over into the next bar. 
Okay, so, so far we went through step one, which is sound selection. So we're done with that. We've done no mixing yet besides basic preamp leveling, just to get the drums to sound right. So next thing you do is route your drums to the mixer channel. So what you're gonna do is just uh, click and drag and it'll select all of them. Then you go to your mixer channel. You'll select the first free channel and hit control shift L and that'll route all the drums. And then you also wanna make sure if you're using a sample that it's tracked out to the mixer track as well. So for mixing, what I do is select every active channel and bring them all the way down so you hear nothing when you play it. And you wanna make sure you're looping the, either the one bar of the most like loud and intense part of your song or the full uh, two bars, which is what I'm gonna do. I mean, eight bars, my bad. All right, so now we're gonna go step by step with each part of my mixing process. So first thing I usually do is find where I want the melody to sit. So I'll start by just bringing the melody up. All right, so I like where this is, which is about minus 9 dB. I, I'll pretty much never have my melodies go above minus 6. The next thing I'll do, if you have an 808 in your track, you're going to have to EQ out the uh, low frequencies of your melody. So you can just add a fruity parametric EQ. Just drag this first one down. I usually do about 150 hertz, and then you can bring another knob down just to make sure you clear everything out. Next, I'd move on to the drum. So I personally like to start with the clap. So I'll just bring it up until it sounds right. Then we're gonna move on to the hi-hat. I usually like my hi-hats a little louder than normal. So I'll just bring it up until it sounds right, just like everything else. snare and this this is usually where I start panning stuff so I'll pan this snare just a little bit to the left we're going about 30% perfect and then we're gonna move on to the second snare So as you can see, I just brought that snare up a little bit and then panned it to the right. So now we're gonna move on to the hi-hats. I usually like, or not hi-hats, open hats. I usually like my open hats sitting a little quieter, so I'll show you how I do this. Okay, perfect. So that is the drum section. So usually what I do for my drums, just to make sure everything's perfectly clean, I'll hit control and then click and drag from the first drum to the last. So it'll select every single one. Then I'll uh, go to a blank mixer track. I have this one right here called drum bus. Just, I have it uh, sitting out here to the right. Then you go down here, right click this button and click route to this track only. This will make sure that all your drums are going into one channel. So you can EQ, uh, you can EQ out all the loads. So I'm gonna just open up this EQ on the drum bus and bring this first knob down just at about probably like 80 hertz and then same, same as the melody, I'm gonna bring the second knob down just to make sure I clear up everything else. Important step I forgot to mention, I just realized this, master channel. Always make sure you have a fruity soft clipper on your master channel. This is what I use to master, so if you want your beast to sound anything like mine, you're gonna need this on. And make sure it's on the last uh, last slot. All right, so final part of the drum mixing is gonna be your 808s. So all you gotta do for your 808 is the same thing as every other drum, bring it up until it sounds right for you. 808s usually tend to sound perfect sitting around zero decibels to minus three, as long as you got the soft clip around. Pretty much everything that is all the drums and the melody so what i'll do next is just listen through and make sure everything sounds right so i'll make sure the hi-hat's loud enough because once you start in once you start to bring in louder elements to your beats you're going to notice that maybe your hi-hat wasn't loud enough or your clap wasn't hitting right so now i'm just going to go through and listen like really well with my ears and just try and find any ears errors that i made up So I think
think everything is sitting just about perfect. So now I'm gonna move on to the way I master my beats. So it's really simple, honestly. Like I said, I keep a soft clipper on, which is honestly basically all I do. And I just make sure my beats are loud enough. If your beats aren't loud enough, all you gotta do is just turn them up until it sounds right. The biggest mistake I see producers doing is making 808s that are too loud. Cause if you're using headphones, sometimes you won't get all of those frequencies for the 808. So it'll sound like it's not hitting as hard. But once you go into like a studio, you're gonna realize that your 808s are way too blown out of proportion. I mean, so try and try and level your 808s better. That's my biggest advice. But other than that, just make sure you have a fruity soft clipper. And then the only other thing that I would do, I add a fruity parametric EQ and I boost the highs by about like two and a half decibels. And then uh, this band six, which is pretty much high frequency as well, right around 5,000 Hertz, bring that up maybe one. And if I'm feeling it, maybe I'll boost the, uh, the low frequencies by like one decibel, but I don't want to on this beat. And that is literally all I do for mastering. That is exactly how I master this beat and upload it to YouTube. So now I will go ahead and track this out and I'll let you guys listen to it. But, but YouTube, that is all I got for this video. Um, I hope this mastering tutorial helped you, this mixing tutorial and all that. If you did learn anything, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, pay attention for some new videos. Also go to my YouTube channel hit that bell button so you know when I'm uploading my next videos and also hit that community tab button and pay attention to that. I'm always posting updates there and getting some more ideas from you guys. So make sure you do that. But other than that, that is all I got for this video. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, turn it up, cute.